Hey everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold again. I hope you like the way Magnus crushed me yesterday. So far, Magnus uh, has three draws in, uh, in Granky. I guess uh, it's time for rest day. Coincidentally, uh, Fabiano Caruana um, doesn't have any draws in his last nine rated games. His last six games in the U.S. Championship were decisive, and so were his first three games in this tournament. Six wins and three losses. And that's funny because he started with five draws in the U.S. Championship. Okay, today we're going to talk about king and pawn endings. If you've watched every lecture I've ever given, you've seen all these, but you've also forgotten them. If you've never seen my lectures, then where have you been all your life? What's wrong with you? Okay, um, this is a position I show advanced classes and beginning classes, and I get the same wrong answers. So now you can give the same wrong answers. So yay, good job. Um, you can have white to play or black to play. White's going up the board. Pawns are blocking each other. Um, so I ask the class, when I teach a class in this position, would you rather have white, would you rather have black, and whose turn would you like it to be? And, um, I mean, experts and A players get this wrong like half the time, and lower-rated players are just guessing. Um, so what do you think? Do you think white to play is doing well, or black to play is doing well, and what would you rather be here? The answer um, is, assuming perfect play, you want it to be your move, um, but it is a draw, but you, you have winning chances if it's your move. So if it's white's move, white plays king c5, that's the only good move. Um, king d5 loses um, to, to king f4, and this is our mutual zugzwang position, whoever's turned it in loses. So king c5. Now, if black wants to not lose, he has to retreat. So you can go to g6 or f6. And the idea is... When the pawn is captured on, on the e5 square, black wants to play the move uh, king e7. So, for example, king f6, king d5, king f7. Uh, and then as soon as you take, you get the opposition, and you maintain the opposition, and this is a draw. And if white gets tired of moving his king around, then he can still make black at his leisure. Okay. So the answer to the question is it's a draw, but you'd rather it's your turn. Um, King d5 loses to king f4, which I already explained. And after king c5, um, sometimes in a chess camp, I'll play the move king g4, which loses, but more often than not, it wins if your opponent doesn't know what he's doing. Here, white has one move that wins. Most of my opponents in chess camp play king d5, which loses to king f4. Now it's white's move. And the winning move is, can you find it? White has one move that wins after king g4. It's king d6. You attack the pawn, and when the pawn is defended, then king d5. And again, black is in zugs one. So if it's your turn to move, you have the advantage. White should play king c5, forcing black to defend correctly. And black should play king g4 if it's black's move. And that would force white to defend correctly. So whoever's turn it is wins the pawn by force, but it's still a draw if two strong players are playing and they understand the position. So king d5 is a blunder. If it's black's move, king f4 is a blunder because we get this position where you're going to be losing. Even the computer is mad. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a funny position because almost everybody knows it, but once I was giving a lesson to a 2200, and he didn't know this position, and he couldn't figure it out, which surprised a friend of mine. So um, for those of you who are, let's say, under 1900, is this a win or a draw? And if it is a win, how do you win it? Um, and for those of you who are over 1900, there's a separate question that I'll ask you. But I'll wait for the low-rated players to figure out their answer. Is this a win or a draw? Okay, and now that you have your answer, hopefully you said win. Two connected pass pawns should almost always win, if not always. Um, for stronger players, you can actually calculate all the way to mate. Um, so if you're over 1900, pause your video and see if you can do it in your head and calculate all the way to mate and tell me how many moves it takes. When I first showed this to Atulia Shetty, who later won the Super Nationals, and now he's 2,500, and beat me last time we played. Um, he looked about 20 seconds, and he gave the right answer, made in. He was about 2,200 at the time, now he's 2,500. Okay, white to move in, made in, how many moves? Assuming white plays correctly. Okay, and the answer is seven, and move six is the toughest to see in your head. Okay. Um, queen is the only way to win. Of course, you could move your king around a lot and then queen. That would take a lot of extra time. 
And now you have two moves that win, king h6 and king f6, but king f6 wins quickly and king h6 takes you an extra 10 moves. So after king f6, black's king is stuck on the side of the board. So if you're playing blitz chess, that's a much quicker way to win. Okay, and now we're actually at move six. Let's see who's texting me here. Let's see. Thanks for uploading videos. Thanks, sweetie. Okay. So uh, white actually has mate in two here because the answer was mate in seven, and white's made five moves. Now, of course, most people would chase the black king until it ran out of squares, but much quicker is to force the black king to you, and that's done with the move queen g3. In the starting position, if you're calculating to mate, that's the hardest move to see. If you're playing a lot of one-minute chess, it's good to know how to mate with a queen as efficiently as possible, even five-minute chess. And after king h6, for some reason, everybody plays this mate, so I won't let you guys down. And another mate is this one, which, which nobody plays. Not sure why exactly. So those are the two checkmates. So in this position, you should have said white wins, but if you move your king forever and ever, you're not going to win because whenever you play one of these four moves with the white king, it's going to be stalemate. And the only way to win is to alleviate the stalemate by playing the move h8. And now, again, king h6 does win, but now you're going to have to show some technique because look at that active black king in the center. Okay, So much better to play king f6 and, um, okay, then the black king is stuck on the side. And for those of you who are very strong, this is made in seven moves. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is the well-known triangulation position. Maybe it's not well-known to you. So it's white to move, but we would prefer that it's black to move because if it's black to move, white plays king g6 and takes the h-pawn. Um, white to move has to save his f-pawn, so he has to play king e5, king f8. And now if you just play like a normal person, then you're going to still mate your opponent. So that doesn't win. Um, so what you'd like to do is you would like the starting position to have black's turn to move. And you would also like this position to be black to move because black actually can't move here. If black plays king f7, we play king f5 and have achieved our goal. If you move your king to e8 or g8, then I can actually queen my pawn. So we move our king backwards. You can go to e4 or f4. I'll go to e4, but I'm not sure why. Again, king f7 is always losing to king f5, and we have our goal. So black waits around. White plays king f4, and black waits around. And white plays king e5. And you'll notice that white just made a triangle, okay? And black had to go back and forth. We've seen this position before, except the first time we saw it, it was white's turn to move. White played king e5 and black played king f8. Now it's black's turn to move, but black doesn't want to move. So I'll give you two sample variations, king f7, and then, okay, I, I win your h-pawn. And the other one um, is king e8 and we make a queen. If you queen right away, it's going to be stalemate. So if you queen here, you did a lot of work and you still didn't win. A lot of people would take a rook, which is a little silly. It still wins. The quickest way is king f6, and then you queen with check and checkmate. Okay, so uh, the way to win for white is to play king e5 and then move the king back. You could also go to f4. You can triangulate this way. Nothing wrong with that, as long as you finish on e5. Okay, so now we made the triangle the other way, and okay, it's black's turn to move. Black can't move here. So black's in trouble because white lost the tempo, and black had to make a move when he didn't want to. Black is in zigzag. This is a famous triangulation position. The only time I saw it in a Grandmaster game was maybe 15 years ago. You guys can look it up. It was an Ivanchuk game. Ivanchuk was up in exchange, and he sacrificed the exchange to get this exact position, which he knew it was a very easy win. Didn't have to sacrifice the exchange, but quicker is better, I guess. Okay, and the last one is very similar. Um, it's the same position, except I added pawns on f3 and g5. Now, I'm actually not that smart to add pawns and have a different kind of problem, but I do pay attention. And at the U.S. Women's Championship, it was either 2007 or 8. It was really one of them. It was in Tulsa. It's the famous one where Crush was playing Zatonsky and they played a playoff and they were both had no time on their clock and Crush got mad at the end because she lost with her opponent having one second left and there was some controversy. Okay, but in that tournament, there was a game played uh, not between uh, Crush and Zatonsky that ended in this position, which I'd never seen before. 
And both players being around 2300, 2350 rated, they knew the triangulation, but they also knew that you can't triangulate here because king f4 is illegal. So there's no there's no triangulation. We can't we can't use f4. So the game ended in a draw when white moved her king around a million times and black moved her king a million times and nothing happened. So you just you can't win. If you if you try to win this way, now you have to take the pawn in its stalemate, and if you don't take the pawn, then black's gonna win. Black's gonna queen her pawn. So white tried by moving her king around forever and ever and nothing worked. And that's correct, nothing does work if you try that way of winning. However, there's another way to try to win which does work. So pause your video and see if you can figure out the winning method for white here. Okay, and actually this reminds me of another problem I showed you where we had the two connected past pawns and we had to unstalemate our opponent. So after king e5, king f8, um, white at her leisure can simply win by getting rid of her advanced f pawn, which really isn't something that you would normally think of, but it wins really easily here. So you just play f7. And this doesn't work in the original problem that I showed you with these pawns off the board, because you will win the h pawn, but the h pawn h5 is not going to win. However, if you win the h pawn here, then you're going to have these two pawns, and you're going to win the g pawn too. Um, you don't have to take the pawn, but, but, I, but I can make you, so you might as well take the pawn. And I play king f5. And we basically got the starting position minus white's f pawn, but it's black's move. Okay, and black doesn't want to move here. In fact, if it was white's move, this would be an easy draw. So we, quote unquote, shoulder the black king out, and the next moves are just moving the king in and taking the pawns. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, I guess you can stop him for one move, but that's it. That's it. Yeah, and we take all the pawns. Rawr! And it was funny, when the game ended in a draw, because white didn't see the idea of playing f7, uh, and the player shook hands, there was a race to the board between Irina Crush and Boris Gulko to show the move f7. I'm not sure who won the race. They both really wanted to show that f7 wins. Um, not only did white not see f7, obviously if she had seen f7, she would have played it. Black also was, you know, do, 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 easy draw, no problem. And then when they showed f7, she was like, oh. So f7 is an unusual idea. You have like this extra pass pawn in the sixth rank, and the only way to win is to give it away. And the reason it's the only way to win is you're getting this position here where it's black's turn to move. And that's more important than number of pawns in this particular instance is getting your king into g6 and taking your opponent's pawns. And the only way to do that is to lose a tempo. You can't triangulate, but you can't give your pawn away. In the previous problem to this one, when these pawns were not here, you could also do this, but you're not going to win with just your h pawn. So, man, king and pawn endings are tough because it's good to have some knowledge beforehand. You can study king and pawn endings, certain positions. Then you can try to get to those positions that you already know, like Ivan Chuck did. And probably I, in my head, I could just now show you like 30 king and pawn end games where I show you the right ideas and the right way to win. And if I'm playing a king and pawn ending, I probably won't have that exact one, but I'll have something similar. And if I know which idea matters in that end game, I can play correctly, usually, even with little time on my clock. But king and pawn endings are difficult because some of them just require calculation of the end, and a lot of them require doing something you wouldn't normally do, losing a tempo, sacrificing a pawn, things that you don't normally do in the opening or middle game just so it's your opponent's move. Um, and generally in the opening and middle game, you don't want it to be your opponent's move, you want it to be your move. But there's so many Zugzwang positions like this one, and yeah, that happens. Well, I hope you enjoyed this king and pawn ending lecture. I'm going to try to find some U.S. Women's Championship positions um, from the tournament last week and, and show you some cool stuff because there was a lot of cool stuff in that tournament. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, don't forget to donate. We just paid our taxes today. Can you see all the tears left? left? Yeah. And, um, man, I thought I was broke before, but I learned the new definition of broke. So atlchessclub.com slash donate. Go to our website. Go to our Facebook page. Go to our Twitter page. It's all there. Go to my son's YouTube page and start donating. What's wrong with you? How can my son loan me money if you don't give him money? Horrible. Okay, you guys are worse than ever. I can't believe it. Okay, remember, the more you pay, the more you learn, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everyone.